Hare Krishna, a very warm welcome to all the devotees to our program on Srimad Bhagavatam study. Today we are going to discuss uh, verses 48 till 60 from the 13th chapter of the first canto. And then uh, we will still have time, so we will move on to the next chapter, that is 14th chapter. And we will try to discuss uh, several verses from the 14th chapter also. Uh, today is our 36th class on the Srimad Bhagavatam study program, which we started uh, a few months ago. So for today's class, I would request Vanaja Mataji to kindly lead us on the Mangala Sharan prayers. Vanaja Mataji, are you, are you okay to lead us? Hare Krishna, Vanaja Mataji, can you hear us? You are muted right now, so if you can unmute, we can hear you. Okay, maybe I know, I'm not sure whether Mataji is hearing my voice or not. So anyone else would like to uh, volunteer in place of Vanja Mataji? Anyone else would like to recite the verses? Can I, Prabhu? Okay, please I go ahead. Also. Okay, Rakesh Prabhu, maybe you can try. Yeah. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupa Hakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvatam Savadhutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitasha De Krishna Karana Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrandavaneshwari Vrashbanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rubyasha Krapa Sindhube Evacha Patita Nama Pavane Bio Vashna Vebio Namonama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gauru Vakta Vranda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yes, Prabhu, very nice. Please continue. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai. Bhagavate Vasudevai. Narayanam Namaskratya, Naram Chaiva Narottamam, Devim Saraswatim Vyasam, Tato Jayam Pudirayet, Nasta Prayeshwa Badreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavatya Tamasloke, Bhakti Rabhavati Nashtaki, Krishna Evasu Devaya, Devaki Nanda Nayacha, Nanda Gopakumaraya, Govindaya Namunama. Excellent, Prabhu. Please. Okay. Now we invite Vrindavaneshwari Mataji to do the recap of the previous class. Mataji, please. Hare Krishna, everyone. Dhanavat Pranams. So this is class summary of class number 35, wherein we discussed verses 29 to 47 of chapter 13, Dhritarasht leaving home. So we, uh, the storyline was Vidurji came to meet his brother Dhritarasht and gives him insight to leave home and, uh, and to go to forest with him to perform penance, that is tapasya. So he says many things to Dhritarashtra, uh, which act as eye opener to Dhritarashtra. So we'll just, I'll just touch upon the important points of the verses discussed in the previous class. In the verse 29, we see that a lot of emphasis is made on Sadhu Sangha. 
it is uh, described in chaitanya charitamrita sadhu sanga sadhu sanga sarva shastra ka sarva shastre kaya alap lav matra sadhu sange sarva siddhi haya vidura a sadhu gives direction and determination to fickle minded dhritarashtra to quit home just as prabhupad also got direction from his guru bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj so sadhu sangha is capable of dispelling the illusory reality of the material world by providing pragya or illuminating jnana in the next verse that is verse 30 it sanyas dharma has been described a sanyasi is considered to be a dead man civilly and therefore the wife becomes a civil widow without the connection of her husband Maharaj Dhritarashtra did not deny his faithful wife to come along with him, but she followed her husband at her own risk. Now, in, in the purport, we see a difference has also been made on Ek Dandi Sanyasi and Three Dandi Sanyasi. Ek Dandi Sanyasis are described as Mayavadis who are the followers of Sripad Shankaracharya and three Dandis are Vaishnav Sanyasis who live in Puri and Vrindavan Dham. Now, there is very important another description that has been made in the purport about Dheeras and Narottama. A Dheer may be detached from the world. He may be a Vairagi, vairagi person. But Narottam is the one who's not just a Vairagi, but he is a devotee of the Lord. <clears throat> so, Dhritarashtra may, may try to become a Dhira, but he may never attain Narottama stage. In next verse, duties of ideal householder has been described. We see that how Maharaj Yudhishthir, he was an ideal householder and he involved himself in uh, activities of dana, tapa and various other noble activities. One who is not prepared to practice injunctions described in Shastras cannot be a good man simply by book knowledge. This has been described by uh, described in the verse. In the next verse, Anxiety of Yudhishthir Maharaj is being elucidated upon. And in verse number 33, it describes the noble nature of, of Maharaj Yudhishthira. He was a great devotee of the Lord. It is very important to note that a devotee never finds faults with others, but he tries to find his own fault and tries to rectify them. We see this when Maharaj Yudhishthir is lamenting that why did his uncles and his aunt leave the house and it may be because of his own mistake. Then in verse number 34, Maharaj Yudhishthir, again it describes lamentation of Maharaj Yudhishthir at the loss of his uncles and aunts. In the next two verse, uh, mental agitation of Sanjaya has been described. Now, it is noteworthy here that Sanjaya was very attached to Maharaj Dhritarashtra. He was personal secretary of Dhritarashtra. So, when Dhritarashtra and Gandhari leaves without his knowledge, he is obviously very much agitated mentally. So, with very heavy heart, he, he informs Maharaj Yudhishthir that he had no idea about the cause of events. In the next verse, we see that it explains the real purpose of cheating others by great souls. Actually, Sanjay tells Maharaj Dhritaraj that he had been cheated by Maharaj Dhritaraj for not informing about his departure. So he says that I have been cheated by the great soul. Now, Srila Prabhupada explains here that uh, the cheating, if it is done for satisfaction of the Lord, then it is good. For example, we see cheating of Dronacharya by Lord Krishna himself on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. We also 
learn the example of Sanatan Goswami. He also cheated the keeper of the prison house while going away to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then in next verse, Naraji appears on the scene. Now, why do pure devotees like Narad Muni appears uh, come to anyone in this world? This is because these pure devotees, they are non-different from the Lord himself. So they come to the conditioned soul to dispel their illusion and lift them from their bodily conception of life. Maharaj Yudhishthir in the next verse tells about his loss to Narad Muni and then he ardently prays to Narad Ji to counsel him and calls him the captain of the ship and he asks him to give him direction and guide him in such a, such a situation. Now in the all the other verses describe in detail the counseling and the direction given by Narad Ji to Maharaj Yudhishthir. In here, Narad Ji advises the king to not to lament for anyone and everyone because everyone is under the control of Supreme Lord. He tells that just as cow is bound by the nose, so are the humans are bound by the scriptural injunctions and therefore conditioned to obey the Supreme. So again, he, he clarifies that Krishna brings the conditioned souls together and separates them at his own sweet will. This happens due to prarabdha of living entities. So basically he, he is trying to explain that your uncles departed are separated from you because it was the will of the Lord. And he did not uh, do well while obeying the scriptural injunctions as mentioned in the Shastras and therefore he had his own prarabdha. Then he further explains to Maharaj Yudhishthir that all material affections are illusory. The eternal living entity uh, they are illusory in a sense that where, because the soul is, uh, is, is always eternal and bodies are always perishable. So the eternal living entity transmigrates from one body to another body by the law of karma. And the material bodies are perishable by their fundamental structure. Therefore, there's nothing to be lamented in the case of soul being transferred into another body. Uh, then Naraji advises Maharaj Yudhishthir to abandon his karta bhav. He also tells that all kinds of anxieties are due to ignorance of the self. We mistakenly think that we are the protectors, protectors and providers of our relatives. But it is actually the Lord whom he calls to be Bhut Brit, uh, who is the actual protector and the actual provider of everyone. Naraji explains further, how can body made of, he asks a question, he puts a question before Yudhishthir Maharaj, how can the body made of five gross elements, which is itself under the control of Kala and modes of material, and modes of material nature protect anyone else? One can see things as they are only when he is in goodness. So what to speak of, what to speak of the ignorant and passionate ones. But above all is Kala Sarpa, and from whose by whose bite, from whose bite no one can be saved. So the best remedy is to practice bhakti yoga. Here, with your permission, I am. I am elucidating a very nice verse composed by Suradas. He says, Suniri mene nirbal ke bal ram. Nirbal hoi. Uh, uh, here he says, Jablag gajbal apno barkyo. Nek saryo nahi kaam. Nirbal hoi bal ram pukaro aye adhi naam. Suri, suniri mene nirbal ke bal ra. 
So Naraji says that the, the protector of everyone, even the weak ones, it is Krishna who's the protector of the weakest of the weak. So in the last verse of the last class, uh, we can come upon a phrase, Jeevo Jeevasya Jeevanam. Maharaj Yudhishthir is advised by Naraji not to worry about his uncles suffering from the want of food, for they could live on vegetables available in the jungle as prasada of the Lord, and thus realize the path of salvation. And if Maharaj Yudhishthir was worried about his uncles being weak, then he should understand that exploitation of the weaker living being by the stronger is the natural law of existence. So, uh, so there is no possibility of checking this tendency by any artificial means under material conditions. It can be checked only by awakening of spiritual sense and spiritual regulations. So that was the summary of the class. Um, I'm sorry for taking so much of your patience. No problem. Uh, that was very nice, Mataji. Very good. But I would request uh, devotees to keep summary a little bit shorter so that uh, uh, we can spend yes. uh, uh, on the class time. So uh, yes. I would suggest that the details in the summary could be uh, kind of uh, ignored and the higher level bullet points can be explained and discussed uh, so that we can move faster. So thank yeah. you very much. Otherwise, the presentation was very, very nice. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Okay. So we will move to the subject matter of the class. Uh, today, as we see that we have already discussed till verse number 47, where Narad Muni has been counseling Yudhishthir Maharaj and primarily he has given this reason that uh, the Lord is in control. So don't uh, think that because uh, if you don't provide for your uncle and auntie, then uh, they are in difficulty. So the Lord will always be in control and he's organizing all these things. So uh, that is the main line of uh, thinking that Narad Muni has been providing uh, to, to Yudhishthir Maharaj. Now the discussion continues almost till verse number 50. Now here we are on the last section here from 38th to 60th verse. So the discussion continues all the way till 50th verse. So 48, 49, 50, these verses will continue to, uh, Narad Muni will continue to uh, guide Yudhishthir, Yudhishthir Maharaj. And then uh, from 51st verse onwards, uh, he starts to give some idea of where uh, Dhritarashtra, Gandhari and Vidura have gone because he could see in the future he started to guide them, uh, guide Yudhishthir Maharaj in that sense. So let us quickly uh, begin our discussion. So today, uh, we have a lot of reading to do. A lot of reading means there is a lot of storyline in today's class that we will cover where there is not much explanation to be, to be made uh, from myself. Uh, uh, so request... Uh, few devotees who can volunteer to read. Anyone would like to volunteer to read? I will pray. Okay, so Rakesh ji is there. I, I will do it. Vanaja Mataji is there. Okay, anyone more? We need at least two more people so that if I they can... Also, I cannot do so. And Jeevan Prabhu is there. Okay. So we will find the fourth person in the class while after Jeevan Prabhu. Okay, so Rakesh ji, please start reading from 48th verse. Rakesh ji? Yes, Prabhu, sorry. Yeah, please start. Therefore, O King, you should look to the Supreme Lord only, who is one without a second and who manifests himself by different energies and is both within and without. Hmm. Therefore, O King, you should look at the Supreme Lord only, who is one without a second and who manifests himself by different energies is both within and without. So this 48th verse, here uh, Narad Muni 
presents a different vision, a, a different uh, idea that uh, you should look at the Supreme Lord only. Now, why Narad Muni is mentioning that you should look Supreme Lord only? Because if you see in the previous verses, the way Narad Muni has been describing this is, first of all, he says that Lord is in control. Lord is in control. He actually brings people together. He actually separates them. Uh, and then he, he then continues to provide a different line of reasoning. He says that everybody is under the control of Kal. Everybody is in the control of Karma. Uh, so like that, he's giving different reasons like Kal is there, Karma is there and so on. And then if you are worried about their subsistence or their, their maintenance, etc., then Jeevo Jeeva Sejeevanam. Say one living entity is the food of the another living entity. So he's reconciling all these three kind of different advice he has been giving in the previous uh, verses. First of all, he's saying Lord is in control. Then he's saying Kal is there and then Karma is there. So everybody gets actually because of Kal and Karma, they, they, they get whatever they are supposed to get in this life. And then Jeevo Jeeva Sejivan. Now here in the 48th verse, he reconciles everything. So Yudhishthir Maharaj might think might be thinking that my dear Narad Muni, at one place you are saying Lord is in control, then at another place you are saying Kal is in control, Karma is in control, and Jeevo Jeeva Sajivanam. So you are presenting me multiple philosophies. How should I understand what exactly is the correct one? Which one is the pro prime, prime philosophy? So here Narad Muni is saying that, O oh King, you should look to the Supreme Lord only, who is one without a second, who manifests himself by different energies. So when Narad Muni is saying that uh, uh, body depends upon Kal, means time, or body depends on karma, uh, like our our past past deeds, or or the body depends upon the other living entities, Jeeva Jeeva Sejivanam. But ultimately, my dear Yudhishthir Maharaj, it is all different energies of the Lord, uh, by different energies. So when we say Kal, that is also energy of the Lord. When we say karma, that is also uh, the energy of the Lord. The Lord has designed the world in such a way that the, the law of karma is acting here. And when we say Jeeva Jeeva Sajeevanam, that is also a rule and energy of the Lord that he has defined. So uh, you should not think it as different. You should only look to the Supreme Lord only. So <clears throat> uh, that is what he is trying to explain to you, Yudhishthir Maharaj. And then he says that the Lord is guiding both within and without. The Lord is actually, through his different energies, is guiding us from both within and without. So what is the example of Lord guiding from within? Can anyone explain? Can anyone has the answer? What is the, uh, what is the example of Lord guiding from within? How the Lord guides from within? Consciousness. Consciousness. Okay. Any other answer? Super soul. Super soul, super soul, Paramatma. So, like we have two, uh, uh, two, what, what I would say, knower of the field. So, one is the soul itself, that is the living entity, and then this, then another one is the super soul. So, the super soul actually guides from within, and how does he guide from without? How does he guide from outside? Through what agencies the Lord guides us throughout from outside? For acharyas and saints. Very nice. Through acharyas and saints. Huh? Guru and Shastra. Primarily Shastra. And the Guru and the saints actually are uh, the, the saintly people who are uh, guiding us and teaching us the Shastra only. So through Shastra, Guru and Sadhus. So this is what Narad Muni is saying. That you should primarily think of the Lord only. Who is manifesting himself in, in different energies and who is guiding both from within and without. That is what Narad Muni is now reconciling. Is. So, so you should not worry. Lord is guiding Dhritarashtra through Vidura. So do not be agitated by this seeming misery. It might appear to you that uh, when your uncle and auntie has left, you have feeling miser, you have feeling very misery, a uh, lot of misery you are feeling, but, but Lord is guiding Dhritarashtra through Vidura. And Lord is achieving his plan, fulfilling his mission. So try to understand and assist Lord's plan. So Narad Muni was trying to say that this whole battle of Kurukshetra, this was the Lord's plan. And through this plan, Lord is trying to establish 
uh, uh, dharma in the in the society so now this moving of dhritarashtra uh, from your home and going out is also part of lord's plan that is also part of lord's plan so try to understand that this is all happening as per lord's plan and he's fulfilling his mission so try to understand this and assist the assist the lord in in his plan like this so 49th verse now rakesh ji please read this that supreme personality of god and lord shri krishna in the guise of all devouring time kala rupa has now descended to the earth to eliminate the envious from the world hmm. so as i mentioned to you in the previous verse uh, narad muni is trying to lead this discussion to this point uh, that this is lord's plan and in this verse it is actually saying the same paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkritam that supreme personality of godhead lord sri krishna in the guise of all devouring time has now descended to the earth to eliminate the envious from the uh, from the world paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkritam so here vinashaya cha dushkritam that theme has been mentioned here so lord is like kal for the asuras so prabhupad used to explain this particular point that for devotees lord is something like a benevolent mother and for for asuras for those who are envious lord is like a uh, lord is like a kal is like he is like death personified so he used to give this analogy uh, prabhupad used to give this analogy that a cat uh, she holds her kitten also in her teeth and the cat also holds a mouse a rat which she kills for her food also in her teeth but there is a difference between the two when the when the cat holds a kitten in her teeth that is something out of protection out of motherly protection she she holds them in the teeth so the devotee may also meet his death but when the devotee meets his death the devotee actually uh, sees the uh, meets the supreme lord in his in his benevolent form in his form as a supreme father but when a asura Uh, is killed or or he's uh, he's he's dying then the lord actually meets this asura as death as kal so that is the explanation uh, prabhupad used to give to explain these these situations where death also comes for the devotee but the death is something like a benevolent benevolent mother but when the death comes for an asura it is like kal roopa it is like very uh, ferocious okay next one prabhu the lord has already performed his duties to help the demigods and he is awaiting the rest you pandavas may wait as long as the lord is here on earth hmm okay so here you will see that narad muni is uh, giving some history the lord has already performed his duty to help the demigods so can you make a guess what what is the help to demigods actually mean here can you make a guess here Lord has already performed his duty to help the demigods. So, what help the demigods were requesting? Elimination of the evil kings or the evil kings. Of evil kings. Tendency. Correct. So, uh, when when the demigods usually go to Brahma ji and Brahma ji together with the demigods go to the shore of the milk ocean, request Lord Krishna to manifest on the earth to eliminate the evil kings and so on. So that is what Narad Muni is mentioning here. The Lord is fulfilling his plan. he is on his uh, on his project he is working on his project and executing the project and completing many details of the project so the lord has already performed his duties to help the demigods and he is awaiting the rest and he is awaiting the rest actually there is some little bit more remaining and awaiting the rest here prabhupad mention in the purport the awaiting the rest actually means here the uh, elimination of the yadu dynasty elimination of the yadu dynasty uh, so who were the yadus to so yadus were those associates of the lord who took birth on this earth to assist the lord in his past time in his uh, past time of uh, uh, establishing the dharma now the lord project is coming to an end because uh, uh, he is already giving hint narad muni is giving the lord has already performed his duties and he is awaiting the rest so most of the project is completed and some detail is remaining 
although he is not clarifying the which detail is remaining but it is very it is very clear if you see the future course of event as you will see in the later verses he is referring here to the elimination of the yadu dynasty so when the lord will depart from this world he will arrange the uh, arrange the incidents in such a way that the yadus will have a fight among themselves they will kill themselves and they will go together with the lord so uh, indirect mention is there that the lord is about to depart and pandavas should also leave once the lord leaves so if you see the last line here he is awaiting the rest and you pandavas may wait as long as the lord is here on earth so clearly uh, it is indication indirect indication that the time is now about to come when the lord will depart from this planet and you pandavas who had come here who had took birth mainly to assist the lord in his past time of uh, establishing the dharma you also uh, should actually start to prepare for leaving uh, once the lord has left this abode so this is what the 50th verse says okay now we go to the 51st verse 51st to 60th verse is a section and a series of verses where now narad muni reveals the future movements of dhritarashtra gandhari and vidura so rakesh ji please read from this 51th bullet point here O king, your uncle Dhritarashtra, his brother Vidura, and his wife Gandhari have gone to the southern side of the Himalaya mountains, where there are shelters of the great sages. Yeah. So, O king, your uncle Dhritarashtra, his brother Vidura, and his wife Gandhari have gone to the southern side of the Himalaya mountains. Huh? So, uh, Narad Muni uh, could actually see into the future. He could. He had that siddhi, so he could see into the future, and because he could see into the future, because he could see into the future, he could make a prediction where uh, Dhritarashtra, Vidur, and Gandhari have gone. So he mentions that actually they have gone to the southern side of the Himalaya mountains, uh, where there are a lot of ashrams of the sages and so on. So that is what he mentions. So fifty second verse, Prabhuji. The place is called Sapsrota. Divided by seven, because there the waters of the sacred Ganges were divided into seven branches. This was done for the satisfaction of the seven great rishis. Yeah, so seven rishis were there, and then the Ganges were divided into seven branches. So this place is known as Sapt Srota. So it's also through his divine vision where he could look where these people have gone. Uh, he he mentions that that place name is Sapt Srota. and it is a place where which is near the ganges and the ganges have been divided into seven seven branches some details he provides okay now uh, in the 53rd 54th 55 and 56 next four verses the process of ashtang yoga has been described by narad muni uh, please prabhu please read this 53rd verse on the beach at sapsrota Dhritarashtra is now engaged in beginning ashtang yoga by bathing three times daily in the morning noon and evening by performing the agni hotra sacrifice with fire and by drinking on the water this helps one control the mind and the senses and frees one completely from thoughts of familial affection hmm. Hmm. now this is the some details have been given on the dhyan yoga So, do you remember what were the uh, what were the eight stages of Ashtang Yoga? Do you remember from your past uh, study and discussion? There are st eight stages, starting with Yam, Niyam, Yama, Niyama, Asana, 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 then Pratyahar, Pranayam, then okay, Asan, Prana, Diyas, then Pratyahar. धारण धारण ध्यान एंड समाधि धारण ध्यान एंड समाधि राइट सो यम नियम आसन प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार धारण ध्यान समाधि सो दीज आर द एट स्टेजेस सो फर्स्ट टू फर्स्ट टू स्टेजेस आर यम एंड नियम नाउ व्हाट इज अष्टांग योग अष्टांग योग एक्चुअली इज अ मैकेनिकल प्रोसेस ऑफ कंट्रोलिंग माइंड एंड सेंसेस एंड टर्निंग देम फ्रॉम मैटर टू स्पिरिट इन ब्रॉड that is ashtang yoga so ashtang yoga means where the 
uh, where the sadhak or where the practitioner actually by his own effort by his own endeavor uh, tries to mechanically control the mind and the senses and in order to control that uh, mind and senses in a mechanical way he has to perform multiple activities starting with yam and niyam so there are some yam and niyam has been mentioned in this 53rd verse and what are those yam and niyam bathing three times daily in the morning noon and evening uh, so this is trying to invoke some mode of goodness in in ourselves you know, being very clean taking three times bath and then performing agni hotra sacrifice so some sacrifice has to be done uh, some yagya has to be performed and then by drinking only water keeping fasting fasting means if you only drink water that is considered as fasting no food so all these things uh, taking bath doing yagya drinking water actually purifies the purifies the mind purifies the uh, internal consciousness this helps one control the mind and the senses and frees one completely from thoughts of familial affection so this is uh, uh, this this some rules of yam and niyam like taking bath and so on are are described here and slowly slowly the the focus of the practitioner should be to try to get away from the material life what is the indication of material life that we have a home we are citizen of a country we are member of a family we are part of a society we have children we have wealth we have business all that so all these are thoughts which are uh, which are hooking ourselves which are hooking the practitioner to the material world so slowly try to get away from these familial affection familial connection so dhritarashtra was doing all this out of extreme att attachment for his son so dhritarashtra had this history he was very much attached to his son duryodhan so that is why it is mentioned that the process of ashtang yog which is a mechanical process of controlling the mind he was trying to do all this now due to vidira he was able to see through all this uh, uh, past history of his family attachment and now he was trying to get get rid of all that attachment by taking to the mechanical process of ashtang yoga so that is what uh, that is what uh, dhritarashtra is trying to do he has got this now desire for advancing spiritually and since he cannot become a narottama he cannot become a devotee of the lord he is adhering to a mechanical process of ashtang yoga by which he can get rid of his familial attachment he had in the past and he could clean himself from in, inside he could control his mind and senses and actually he can move towards uh, move towards spiritual advancement so that is the process of ashtang yoga okay next one prabhu please read one who has controlled the sitting postures the yogic asana and the breathing process can turn the senses toward the absolute personality of godhead and thus become immune to the contaminations of the modes of material nature mm. namely mundane goodness passion and ignorance yeah now you see the next two stages are kind of mentioned here which is what were the next two stages the first two are yam and niyam the next two are uh, asan and pranayam so one who has controlled the sitting posture uh, sitting posture means asan and the breathing process that is pranayam so by making these yogic posture the padmasan and then doing some pranayam uh, uh, he can turn the senses towards the absolute personality of godhead so what what is trying to do he is trying to now move inward he is trying to cut his attachment family attachment from the outside he is doing all the yam niyams doing upvas doing uh, bathing of three times a day and so on but now by by the process of yoga asanas and by the process of pranayam he is now moving inwards he is now trying to meditate inside on the parmatma in his heart huh? turn the senses towards the absolute personality of god now you can see in the picture also he is closing his eyes he is actually moving inwards and then trying to focus on the uh, trying to focus on the parmatma in the heart hmm. and then what does it do what does this process of uh, asan and pranayam does he becomes immune to the contaminations of the modes of material nature namely mundane goodness passion and ignorance so uh, this is how he is trying to lift his consciousness he is getting rid of uh, uh, tamoguna he is getting rid of rajoguna and also actually getting rid of uh, sattvaguna 
so getting rid of sattva guna means he is now actually focus on the shuddha sattva which is the paramatma in the heart so this is how he is uh, he is moving inside and then going moving towards the next stages like dharan and dhyan where he is turning the mind inside towards the lord in a much more deeper way so let us see the 55th verse prabhu please go on dhrit rashtra will have to amalgamate his pure identity with intelligence and then merge into the supreme being with knowledge of his qualitative oneness as a living entity hmm. with the supreme brahman hmm. being freed from the blocked sky he will have to rise to the spiritual sky yeah hmm. so now you see uh, the stage that has been described here is the the advanced stages of uh, ashtang yoga where what in the previous verse was described was he was coming up from rajoguna tamoguna satvaguna he was actually elevating himself above all these mode of passion, mode of uh, uh, material nature so when we get above the modes of material nature in what stage are we situated ourselves uh, in what stage are we situating ourselves do you remember the technical word dharana no no okay dharana is certainly uh, is is from the ashtang yoga sense i'm actually referring to something which is mentioned in bhagavad gita chapter 18 hmm? where this process of ashtang brahma yoga brahma ha, very nice very nice mata ji very nice brahma bhut prasanna atmana shochati na kankshati brahma bhut so here you can see here what is being mentioned here dhritarashtra will have to amalgamate his pure identity with intelligence and then merge into the supreme being with knowledge of his qualitative oneness as living entity with the supreme brahman with the supreme brahman now are we at a brahma bhut stage uh, we normal living entities that we are uh, in the in the practicing stage are we at that stage yes or no 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 so what is the contamination on our heart on our on our consciousness what are the contaminations lack of lack of material nature all the modes of material nature there could be several answers like modes of material nature like modes of material nature is somebody can say lust anger greed pride illusion envy so these are the manifestations of modes of material nature now when we are getting rid of these modes of material nature lust anger greed pride illusion envy if we have got rid of them then what remains then remains the purified consciousness that is the brahma bhuta stage so pure spirit so this is what the practitioner of ashtang yoga has to reach this stage he has to reach he has to reach this stage where he should realize that actually qualitatively he is one with the supreme lord he is one with the brahman he is one with the qualitatively he is one with him that is where that is the progress he has to, till that stage he has to make that progress so once he has made that progress now he is now qualified to cross over the material nature and move to the spiritual domain that is where and that is what is being mentioned being freed from the blocked sky blocked sky means the material nature and he will have to rise to the spiritual sky that is what that is what he has to do so is is this verse clear 53rd 54th 55th verse is it clear how how the process of ashtang yoga is taking the consciousness from the lower modes to the higher modes ultimately reaching to the brahma bhuta stage and once the sadhak and the practitioner has reached to the brahma bhuta stage he is now ready for liberation he is ready what for is, mukti what is blocked sky blocked sky means he is he is still blocked due to the modes of nature because of lust anger greed pride illusion envy that is blocked sky being freed from the block sky he will have to rise to the spiritual sky so that is that is how uh, it is being mentioned here is it clear mata ji yes thank you yeah ah. so devotees and how do devotees do this how do devotees do this manoja mata ji can you please mute yourself please by surrendering to the lord ha so our process is different this is ashtang yoga process in ashtang yoga process the process is mechanical in nature the process is mechanical in nature mechanical in nature means we force the practitioner force uh, to control the mind 
he follows various uh, rules and regulation and, and then he 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 does like that and in in devotional service what do we do we engage into the process of devotional service of hearing and chanting we don't do a mechanical process like uh, uh, making padmasan and then doing pranayam and then uh, uh, doing all these uh, various other activities we are our prime our prime activity is shravanam kirtanam shravanam and kirtanam that is our prime activity through shravanam and kirtanam what we try to do we try to awaken love for god in our heart we try to awaken love for lord in our heart and that is how we try to develop control of mind and senses because of love so that is why bhakti yoga is called as yoga of love yoga of love of lord bhagavat prem ka vigyan bhagavat prem ka yog that is what uh, so this is what uh, this is what we try to do we follow the instructions of the guru we engage in the process of uh, hearing and chanting we awaken the love of our love of the lord in our heart and through this we try to cross over the modes of material nature and we come to that brahma bhuta stage like that and then we continue our continue our devotion continue our development of love for the lord and ultimately reach to the stage of bhava and then prema so the the purification of consciousness happens uh, in the same way the the lower modes actually subside uh, and then ultimately we develop the uh, uh, the love for the lord so that purification happens in the same way in both ashtang yoga and in the in the in the in the process of devotion like bhakti yoga but the but the means but the uh, but the route that that the process uh, the the sadhaka take is different and another difference is in in dhyan yoga the sadhaka only reach to the brahma bhuta stage the ultimate result is liberation only mukti the the uh, the, the follower of dhyan yoga doesn't get uh, doesn't get enter into the spiritual domain like uh, to the to the lotus feet of the lord so that is the difference okay now we move to the 56 verse so this is the concluding verse in the in the series of the ashtang yoga of dhritarashtra please prabhu please read he will have to suspend all the actions of the senses even from the outside and will have to be impervious to interactions of the senses hmm. which are influenced by the modes of material nature after renouncing all material duties he must become immovably established beyond all sources of hindrances on the path yeah so ultimately in the ultimate in the uh, advanced stages of dhyan yoga what happens is that the sadhaka is now completely absorbed inside on the form of the parmatma and then he has nothing to do with the outside world he is completely impervious he is completely oblivious to the fact that something exists outside he is so deeply meditating on the form of the parmatma inside his heart so what narad muni is trying to say to uh, maharaj yudhishthir that my dear king uh, you don't try to bring him back he is already now focusing very strongly very nicely deeply inside and now when you go to him you probably will rekindle his attachment for his family life so please don't do that Uh, let him let him move in the direction as the plan of the lord is like that and let this let this continue to go on so you don't you don't uh, uh, think too much about it uh, so this is uh, this is what the indication of this verses <clears throat> and in the conversation of between narad and yudhishthir <coughs> yes prabhu please read more <coughs> oh king he will quit his body most probably on the fifth day from today and his body will turn to ashes hmm. so <clears throat> now uh, narad muni is now looking into the future because he is trikal darshi he is uh, he has that siddhi he has that power by the mercy of the lord that he could see into the future also so he is saying that from today uh, five days from now he will quit his body he will quit his body uh, most probably on the fifth day from today and his body will turn to ashes so when he say he will quit his body then uh, yudhishthir might have this idea that oh my uncle will leave his body so i let me still go there and get his body and do a proper cremation so narad muni is uh, clarifying that doubt also that you don't need to do a cremation uh, by his own yogic shakti 
by his own yogic power uh, dhritarashtra will invoke uh, some fire and in the fire he will cremate himself he will burn himself so that will be self generated fire through the yogic process and that's how he it will consume dhritarashtra body also so you don't need to worry about his cremation also then yudhishthir maharaj might think okay my uncle will will burn uh, will get burnt uh, uh, in in the yogic fire but what about my auntie now let me go and bring my auntie so uh, narad muni anticipating this mention this please read while outside observing her husband who will burn in the fire of mystic power along with his thirst cottage his chaste wife with enter the fire with red pretension hmm so <clears throat> narad muni is clarifying that uh, my dear king uh, don't worry about gandhari also he she is a very chaste wife and uh, uh, she will she will already feeling separation from her hundred sons the, who were killed in the battle of kurukshetra she will then start feeling separation from her very dear husband also dhritarashtra whom she followed very chastely throughout her life and seeing all this she will actually enter into the fire out of his own sweet will and perform sati sati sanskar so prabhupad in the purport actually clarifies this topic of sati that in the past the ladies uh, uh, would voluntarily enter into the fire of uh, uh in in the, into the fire where the husbands were burnt the the ladies would voluntarily enter into it because the separation from the husband was more fiery or wo were more burning compared to the compared to the flames of the fire so that is why because they actually uh, voluntarily agreed to enter into the fire when the husbands were also uh, passing away so that is what prabhupad mentioned in the purport but and then he further clarifies later on this system of sati it happened so that it became uh, something like forced upon the lady who became a widow so the society would force the lady to enter into that fire and then actually it started to take criminal direction criminal uh, 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 criminal uh, outlook uh, it became a criminal offense where uh, a widow was forced to enter into the pyre of the husband <clears throat> so it was abolished and in today's time and age it is not possible for the modern lady to perform this kind of a samskar so this is what prabhupad clarifies because sati has quite some negative connotation in the modern discourse so prabhupad has clarified why it was there in the past it was properly done it was very much acceptable but not acceptable because it became it took a very uh, a uh, criminal uh, uh, dimension and hence has been uh, has been banned or uh, restricted by the state laws so in this time and age it is not possible so that clarification has been given okay next one prabhu <clears throat> vidura being affected with delight and grief will then leave that place of sacred pilgrimage hmm. then yudhishthir maharaj might think okay my mother uh, gandhari has gone my uncle dhritarashtra has left so let me bring my uncle vidur so then uh, uh, narad muni clarifies that also say uh, <clears throat> vidura actually did not come here to hastinapur mainly to enjoy royalty he never was of that opinion now because he has uh, uh, done his job he has he has uh, brought his uncle back onto the right path He will now move to a sacred place of pilgr pilgrimage. So here there are two things mentioned in this uh, in this verse. He will be delightful and he will be grief stricken. So why he will be delightful? Can anyone guess why he will be delightful? Because uh, Dhritarashtra uh, could meet a very uh, good death. Good death. Huh? He could he could, despite the fact that he did all kind of scheming, he did all kind of nonsense together with his children. and so on against the pandavas relatively speaking he got a very good destination he got a spiritual destination through the process of ashtang yoga that he started to perform on the advice of vidura and then why would he be grief stricken why would he be grief stricken any guesses because in all he was the brother hmm. anyhow yeah anyhow he was a brother 
so some family affection attachment was there because he was his elder brother so what that is one reason why he was gift stricken prabhupad gives one more reason uh, can uh, can you guess that that's a more on a spiritual reason <clears throat> that he could not attain the supreme yeah you are supreme yeah. lotus feet of the lord yeah, yeah yeah you are right mother you are right he could not become a pure devotee he could not become a narottama he could only become a dhira so so dhritarashtra destination was that he could only become liberated he got mukti but he could not enter into the spiritual kingdom of the lord or become the associate of the lord that he he could not do so that is why uh, that is he was he was a bit bit grief stricken because of some family affection uh, with his elder brother and because of the fact that he could not make him uh, the pure devotee and get him the top most supreme most destination uh, what a person could desire or aspire hmm. so with this uh, in order to overcome this grief he actually left for a pilgrimage hmm. so that is 59th verse and then concluding verse the 60th verse of this chapter prabhu ji please read this <clears throat> having spoken thus the great sage narada along with his veena ascended mm. into outer space mm. yudhishthir kept his instruction in his heart and so was able to get rid of all lamentations mm. now there are couple of things when we are concluding this chapter we need to remember first of all narad muni uh, he was a transcendental spaceman after instructing yudhishthir maharaj he his job was over yudhishthir maharaj was specified and he took his veena started chanting narayan narayan and then disappeared and uh, went to his uh, went to his other destination huh? so prabhupad ji mentioned in the purport that with all this description of ashtang yoga we should not get disturbed or we should not get distracted we should see the example of narad muni how narad muni could achieve such position he became a transcendental spaceman he became a associate of the lord he became a close uh, assistance of the assistance of the supreme lord how he could become simply by the association of pure devotees he could achieve that feat so there is nothing for us to get attracted towards the process of ashtang yoga and we should simply follow the example of narad muni so this is one very good point which uh, uh, prabhupad mentioned in the purport and then there is another very important lesson for us when we read this chapter and this in lesson is when we look at personalities like yudhishthir maharaj yudhishthir maharaj is dharmaraj and no one knows the nuances of dharma better than yudhishthir maharaj but still uh, a person like yudhishthir maharaj was overcome by grief overcome by lamentation so this can happen to anyone if it could happen to yudhishthir maharaj it could happen to arjuna in the battle of kurukshetra it could very easily and very much possibly happen to living entities like all of us so what the lesson for us is that the way to get rid of such lamentation is what association of devotees how yudhishthir maharaj could get rid of that lamentation he could get rid of, rid of that lamentation through the association through the counsel of good advice of narad muni so however philosophically advanced philosophically elevated we may be in our life but we are all vulnerable and subject to these kind of life's lamentation life's challenges and so on and we may also be in our life be overcome by grief so arjuna heard this uh, bhagavad gita in the battlefield of kurukshetra but just few days after in the battle field of kurukshetra when he lost his son abhimanyu he was devastated he knew all the gita but he was still devastated so uh, only by more advice and counseling by lord krishna he could once again regain his composure so these attractions the family attractions and affections are so strong and if we get carried away through some of these affections we should not feel guilty we should not feel like oh we are spiritualist we are actually following bhagavad gita for last 25 years and how come such grief we could over could overcome us no if it could overcome yudhishthir maharaj it could overcome arjuna it can overcome very much us also the remedy is to continue to take devotee association to overcome such lamentation and grief so these are the uh, very important lessons from from this particular chapter
with this we move to the next chapter and this is titled as disappearance of lord shri krishna and uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, overview map of the disappearance of lord krishna this is chapter number 14 we will try to cover uh, say first two sections in this uh, in this chapter till verse number 29th most of it is reading most of it is reading it is uh, it is not much of a uh, philosophical discussion you will see in this chapter and more of uh, i would say a uh, storyline that we would like to cover here huh? and now i would like to invite our next reader vanaja mata ji to read from here onwards okay so rakesh ji you may continue to be on mute and vanaja mata ji can be unmute so vanaja mata ji while you are reading you keep it unmuted and then once you have completed the reading you please once again go to the mute mute yes. mode okay yes. so please read from here now i have taken one sanskrit words here because so far we have not taken any sanskrit words and it was becoming very much english only i just wanted to recite something from bhagavatam uh, just for purification so please read together with me suta uvacha suta uvacha samprasthite dwarkayam samprasthite dwarkayam जिष्णौ बंधु दित्रक्षया जिष्णौ बंधु दित्रक्षया ज्ञातुं च पुण्यश्लोकस्य ज्ञातुं क पुण्यलोक श्लोकस्य कृष्णस्य च विचेष्टितम् कृष्णस्य से विचेष्टितम् 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 या नो प्लीज रीड द ट्रांसलेशन हियर या श्री सुत Suta Goswami said, hmm. Arjuna went to the Dwaraka to see Lord Krishna and other friends and also to learn from the Lord of his next activities. Yes, very good. Huh? If you now remember, when we completed the chapter number 12, the chapter number 12 was titled as the birth of uh, King Parikshit, Emperor Parikshit's birth. So in that the last verse was 36th verse so uh, when Lord, when uh, parikshit maharaj took birth there was lot of celebrations yudhishthir maharaj invited lot of people lot of celebration lord krishna also became the chief guest in that celebration and after participating in that ceremony lord krishna left for dwarka so i hope you remember that now in the 36th verse the detail has been given when he left for dwarka what who were the people who accompanied Lord Krishna? So it is mentioned that <clears throat> uh, uh, that when the Lord uh, took leave from King Yudhishthir, Draupadi and other relatives, then two people actually went with the Lord. One was Arjuna and the other was the members of the Yadu Vamsha. So Arjuna and the members of Yadu Vamsha left together with Krishna to Dwarka. So this is now reconnecting the dots in the 14th chapter. Arjuna went to Dwarka to see Lord Krishna and other friends and also to learn from the Lord of his next activities. So what are the next activities? What is the indication? What is the meaning of the word next activities? So <clears throat> Lord had taken birth on this planet for some purpose. Main purpose was to organize this battle of Kurukshetra and to rule out, eradicate, eliminate the evil kings like Duryodhan. He has now achieved that project. He has not completely uh, finished that project. That war was over. Yudhishthir is now peacefully ruling the planet. So now Arjuna want to go to Dwarka just to get a hint of what is the Lord's next plan. Uh, is he going to eradicate some more kings? Are there any other project, any other, any other plans in the minds of the Lord? So one agenda was to meet the relatives, uh, to inquire about their well-being. And the second agenda was to know what is his next activity, Lord's next activity. So that is why Arjuna went. So verse number two, Mataji, please read. A few months passed hmm. and Arjuna did not return. Maharaja Yatistha then began to observe some inauspicious moments which hmm. were fearful in themselves. Hmm. So Arjuna had gone and several months have passed. 
there was no news from arjuna there was no news for the well being of lord krishna and other dwarka vasis from dwarka and on top of that yudhishthir maharaj start to observe some very bad omen and then the description of this om these omens will be one of the main subject of this uh, in in this chapter so that is what start to happen and yudhishthir maharaj start to feel uh, we did not we never saw these kind of omen in my kingdom and at the same time he started to connect the dots and there is no news from arjuna there is no news from dwarka what is going on is everything all right narad muni recently came and he actually gave me the hint that lord has completed his plan and accept some other few things are remaining and then uh, you should also start preparing to leave when the lord leaves so he gave that hint so is it something that the lord has disappeared some has some event like that happened so all those thoughts started to come into the mind of yudhishthir maharaj so please read from here mataji third one he saw that the direction of eternal time has changed and this was very fearful there were disruptions in the seasonal regularities the people in general had become very greedy angry and deceitful and he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood hmm so he is seeing some symptoms what are these symptoms the symptoms are the direction of eternal time has changed and this was very fearful uh, direction of eternal time has changed means uh, actually the Dwa uh, the dwapar yuga is now en ending and kaliyuga is about to come so this is the change of the direction of eternal time and this was very fearful there were disruptions in seasonal regularities so seasonal regularities means there is certain time when a particular season remain then a certain time in a particular season begin but if the season doesn't end on time continues for for more time or doesn't start on time then that is called seasonal irregularity so there were there were seasonal irregularities the people in general had become very greedy angry and deceitful and he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood so what propad mentioned in the purport is that when our life becomes ungodly then all these things start to happen uh, say for example uh, disruptions in the seasonal regularities now i'll give you example from modern day times people in this time and age in kaliyuga are most of them are ungodly in nature they are greedy and so on and because of their greed because of their deceitful nature they do all kind of nonsense things and they don't regard the material nature like the way they should have regarded so these uh, uh, <clears throat> like global warming because of the pollution today is a result of that so it is not something which is which is very difficult to understand that when the society in general become godly then we do see disruptions in seasonal regularities and pollution global warming are the example of that similarly the people in general had become very greedy angry and deceitful and he saw that they were adopting foul means so what it means is in yudhishthir kingdom actually the people were unaware of all these things they were not knowing what is greed what is anger what is deceit what are foul means of livelihood they never know but yudhishthir maharaj saw that people now in my kingdom actually have become greedy angry and deceitful this is what why when when this happens this happens mainly when uh, when the environment is generally is ungodly when we when we forget the supreme lord in our life then all that happens is is this greed anger and deceit huh? so this is something uh, this is something what happens and that's what this is maharaj started to suspect uh, that <clears throat> that it looks like that the lord is departing or the lord has gone away from this planet that is why i am seeing all these symptoms so please read the next one mata ji all ordinary transactions and dealings mm. become polluted with cheating even between the friends between friends and in familiar familial affairs there was always misunderstanding between father mothers and sons between well wishers and between brothers even between the husband and wife there was always 
strain and quarrel. Hmm. So Prabhupada ji tries to explain this that when the when the consciousness become ungodly, when we remove the Lord from the center of our life, then the relationship troubles also start to happen. Uh, all ordinary transactions and dealings become polluted with cheating even between friends. And in familial affairs, there was always misunderstanding between fathers, mothers and sons, between well-wishers, between brothers, like that. So, Prabhupada explains that why this happens, because Jiva has this tendency to become master. Jiva wants to control everything. And uh, because Jiva wants to become master, and his senses are not perfect. So because his senses are not perfect, the senses are always illusioned. They always commit mistake. And when they commit mistake, they try to hide that mistake by cheating propensity. And when they do this cheating, all these relationships are destroyed. The relationship with friends, relatives, husband and wife, even parents and so on. All these relationships are destroyed. And why it is happening? Only because of this propensity that the jiva wants to become the master, becomes want to become the controller. So this is why the all these relationship actually starts to destroy. On the other hand, on the contrary, when it is coming to when it is the question of devotees, so devotees are not considering themselves as the controller. Devotees live a different philosophy. Devotee lives this philosophy that the Lord is the supreme controller. Bhokta Ram Yagya Tapsam. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Huh? That is the philosophy that the Lord, the devotees live. Or Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam Yat Kinchyam Jagatyam Jagat. Huh? Tena Tek Tena Bhunjita Magradha Kasyat Swidhanam. Hmm? So, <clears throat> the devotees think that the Lord is the proprietor of everything. And I am only supposed to take my own quota. And that is why in the life of devotees, generally these problems are either absent or maybe present in a fewer quantity in a, in a smaller magnitude. Huh? So that is something which we need to reflect upon when we are looking at these two verses, number three and four. That ungodliness, a lack of God consciousness is actually the cause of all kind of problems in the society. Be it pollution, be it relationship problem, be it, uh, be it anything. Huh? So that is what it means. Okay. Move to the next one. Fifth one. <clears throat> in course of time, it came to pass that people in general, became accustomed to greed, anger, praise, etc. Maharaja Isitra, observing all these omens, spoke to his younger brother, Bhishmesh. Bhimsen. 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 Huh? So, in course of time, it came to pass that people in general became accustomed to greed, anger, and pride. Become accustomed. Accustomed here. Actually, what is the hint is that in the kingdom of Yudhishthir Maharaj, people did not know in the past what is greed, anger, and pride. And now people have become accustomed to greed, anger, and pride. So Maharaj Yudhishthir, when he observed these omens, he became alarmed. And then he spoke to his younger brother Bhimsen. Please read the sixth one. I sent Arjuna to Dwaraka to meet his friends and to learn from the personality of Godhead, Krishna of his program of work. Hmm. Read the seventh one. Since he departed, seven months have passed, yet he has not returned. I do not know factually how things are going there. Uh -huh. So, Yudhishthir Maharaj is now expressing his mind to his younger brother Bhim Sen. I send my brother Arjuna to Dwarka. Seven months have passed. No news. No news. I'm really getting worried. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what is happening in Dwarka. I'm seeing all these omens. So like this, he's, he's sharing his heart with, with his brother. Okay. Eighth one, Mataji. Is he going to quit his earthly earth pastimes as they were see Narada indicated? Has that time already arrived? Yeah. So he's now making a guess, uh, making a, a uh, uh, ma making some uh, guess that uh, Devarshi Narad actually hinted something like this, that the Lord is about to depart. So has that time already come? Uh, that is what he is now thinking. Okay. From him right. only, all our kingly offenses, good wise, lies, progeny, control over our subjects, victory over our enemies, 
and future accommodations in higher planets have become possible. All this due to his casualness, mercy upon us. Yeah, causeless mercy upon us. Huh? Causeless. Ahay to ki kripa. Huh? Causeless mercy. Now in the ninth verse, Yudhishthir Maharaj is remembering, reflecting upon that throughout the life of Pandavas, how much uh, because of the mercy of the Lord, because of the kindness of the Lord, they were able to achieve so much. Their opulence, their good wives, their lives, their progeny, uh, their rule of their kingdom, uh, their victory over their enemies, all the things that they have achieved in their life, Yudhishthir Maharaj is now reflecting, it was all because of Lord Sri Krishna. So here we can see in this verse that how a devotee actually reflects when he becomes successful. He gives the credit to the Lord. So do you remember any verse from Bhagavad Gita uh, where it is mentioned that uh, actually the ultimate sanctioner is the Lord? Do you remember that verse? Which verse is that? Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva no, no, loka is, no, no, that is one, one thing. That is from the 18th chapter. I'll give you the hint. It is from the 18th chapter uh, where the Lord says that for anything to become successful, there are five factors involved. So do you remember those five factors? Oh, yeah. Yes. It is 18 by 14 words. I don't yes, Mataji. Remember. Yes, very correct. Very good. Very nice. 18.14. So those, those five factors are Adishthanam, Karta, yes. Karnam, Cheshtha and Daiva. So Adishthanam means the field of activities. And Karta means the doer. Then Karnam means the instruments that the Karta actually utilizes, like the senses, Karmendriyas, Gyanendriyas and so on. Cheshtha means his own endeavor. And Daiva, Daiva means his, uh, Daiva means the supreme will. The, the will of the Lord. So there may be Adhishthanam in your favor, there may be Karta in your favor, Karanam in your favor, Cheshta in your favor. But if Daiv is not in your favor, then you will not get the result. Like I will give you the very modern example of India losing the Cricket World Cup. They played 11 matches, first 10 matches they won like anything. The only match they lost was the finals. So what was missing? Daiva. The will of the Lord was missing. Although they did everything nice, the whole world was saying it is so difficult now to beat this team, India, which is vic having victory with such huge margins. But on that particular day of final, they lost badly. It was a one-sided match where Australia won. So what was not in favor? Daiva was not in favor. So like this, for any success, uh, the right mentality is to give credit to the Lord. Although there, your own endeavors are also required, but ultimately the sanction comes from the Supreme Lord. That is the uh, that is the good point in this verse. Okay. Yeah, Mataji, now you need to read this. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is there is a little Sanskrit here. Yes. Yeah, just just yeah yeah I will I will I will recite and then you kindly re repeat after me. Pashyotapata nara vyagra divyan. Pashyotapata nara vyagra divyan. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Pashyotapata nara vyagra. Nara vyagra. Divyan bhavan. Divyan bhavan. Sadehikan. Divyan bhavan. Sadehikan. 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 Darunan. Sham Sato Durat, Darunan Sham Sato Durat, Bayam no Buddhi Mohanam. Bayam no Buddhi Mohanam. Yeah, okay, read this. Just see, oh man, with a tiger's strength, how many miseries due to the celestial influences, earthly reactions, and bodily pains, all very dangerous in themselves. Our fourth boarding danger in near future by deluding our intelligence. Hmm. Oh, man with a tiger strength, how many miseries due to celestial <coughs> influences? So, celestial influences means which kind of misery? Adi Daivik. Earthly reactions, earthly reactions means Adi Bhautik. 
एंड बॉडिली पेन्स बॉडिली पेन्स मीन्स आधी आत्मिक सो वी रिमेंबर वेन वी डिस्कस दिस सब्जेक्ट मैटर लाइक भगवत गीता एंड भागवतम वी ट्राई टू डिस्कस देर आर सेवरल टाइप ऑफ मिजरीज इन दिस वर्ल्ड जन्म मृत्यु जरा व्याधि इज वन कैटेगरी बट अनदर कैटेगरी इज आधि दैविक आधि भौतिक एंड आधि आत्मिक आधि दैविक मीन्स बिकॉज ऑफ नेचर आधि भौतिक मीन्स बिकॉज ऑफ अदर लिविंग एंटिटीज आधि आत्मिक मीन्स बिकॉज ऑफ अवर ओन माइंड एंड बॉडी सो इट इज मैं दिव्यान भौमान सदिकान दिव्यान मीन्स आधि दैविक भौमान मीन्स आधि आधि भौतिक एंड सदिकान मीन्स आधि आत्मिक सो एज द कलयुगा विल प्रोग्रेस दीज मिजरीज विल इंक्रीज ऑल वेरी डेंजरस इन दम सेल्स एंड आर फोर बोर्डिंग डेंजर इन नियर फ्यूचर बाय डिल्यूडिंग अवर इंटेलिजेंस so these are <clears throat> as the material progress increases in this world that would mean increase in adhi daivik adhi bhautik and adhi atmik miseries together that is what prabhupad actually reflects in this purport so such a nice reflection he is saying that as the modern day uh, modern day civilization will progress more and more they will become more and more modern what it means is it will mean more adhi daivik problems more adhi bhautik problems and more adhi atmik problems and we saw this example recently we have seen corona after corona we are seeing wars ukraine war israel war and so on so although we are modern but all these difficulties adhi daivik adhi bhautik adhi adhi atmik are not reducing on the contrary it is increasing okay now there are a list of omens so we will try to finish this list of omens by reading them i don't think that requires a lot of explanation and before we start to read the list of omens you just focus on the picture on the left hand side and i was also looking at this picture and all these omens that you see in these verses specifically starting from 12th verse are kind of very artistically very sweetly very nicely have been Uh, painted by the painter in this in this picture so i was wondering how nice and how uh, nicely shila prabhupad has guided their disciples to preach this movement of krishna consciousness in a very beautiful way through these paintings and so on so you can also enjoy the enjoy the painting while we read these verses so mata ji please read all all of you have you only have to read the left side of my body my thighs arms and eyes are all quivering again and again i am having heart palpitations due to fear all this indicates undesirable happenings yeah so here there are some omens there are some apshakun apshakun omens uh, through the bodily features bodily means the the there is quivering there is twitching happening in the uh, thighs arms eyes jaise uh, we call in hindi my माय बाई आंख फड़क रही है बाई आंख फड़क रही है मतलब देर इज सम अपशकुन गोइंग ऑन समथिंग बैड इज गोइंग टू हैपन सो दिस काइंड ऑफ ओमेन वाज सीन इन द बॉडी ऑफ युधिष्ठिर महाराज सो युधिष्ठिर महाराज इज शेयरिंग विद हिज ब्रदर भीमसेन द 12th वन जस्ट सी ओ बीमा हाउ शी जैकल कैरी क्राइस्ट क्राइस एट द राइजिंग सन एंड वॉमिट्स फायर एंड हाउ द डॉग बार्क एट मी फियरलेस Hmm. Yeah. So here, oh Bima, how the she jackal cries at the rising sun and vomits fire, and how the dog barks at me fearlessly. So this is another omen. Now I could point out the jackal here. This looks like a jackal here, and where the fire is emanating from the mouth of the jackal in the picture. And maybe there is some dog. Probably here is the dog. Maybe here is also another dog, which is kind of barking fearlessly at Yudhishthir Maharaj. So this is another omen. Now let let us go to the next one. I'll I'll try to show you more more such in the picture. Oh, yeah. Bima Sena, tiger amongst men. Now useful animals like cows are passing me on my left side, and lower animals like the asses are circ circumventing me. My horses appear to weep upon seeing me. Yeah, now the three more animals are mentioned. One is cow, so you can see the cow here. She is passing me on my left side, so maybe it is over overtaking Yudhishthir Maharaj from the left side. So that is also a bad omen. 
and then lower animal like asses are circumambulating me circumambulating means parikrama they are trying to go around me and then the horses appear to weep upon seeing me so maybe there are some horses probably here they are weeping when they see me huh? so this is another sign of bad omen so now today you will become a, a shastri in the signs of omens huh? after reading all this 14th just, one please just see the pigeon is like a messenger of death the strength of the wolves and their rival crows crows make my heart tr tremble it appears that they want to make a void of the whole universe yeah now you can see here maybe there is one bird here probably this is a pigeon and maybe this is the owl i don't know for sure but they look like a birdly creatures and probably these are crows owls and owls and and, and birds so this is another indication of uh, they seem to be like messenger of death pigeon is actually the messenger of peace but the pigeon looking like a messenger of death is like a bad omen owl is shrieking crows are making uh, some sound which is making his heart tremble so this is uh, another list of bad omen okay 15th one just see how the smoke encircles the sky it appears that the earth and the mountains are trembling trembling just hear the cloudless thunder and see the bolts of the blue mm, so there are some from yeah, the bolts from the blue wow. so there are some indication of smoke so you can see the smoke here and then the earth and the mountains are throbbing making making some kind of deep sound and then uh, uh, the clouds are thunder so maybe some thunderstorms pictures you can see in here so this is how yudhishthir maharaj sitting together with his brother bhim sena is seeing bad omens all around him and then okay 16th one the wind blows violently blasting dust everywhere and creating darkness clouds are raining everywhere with bloody disasters hmm so winds are blowing violently blasting dust everywhere and creating darkness so some more description from the nature as bad omen okay we have few more okay 17 the rays of the sun are declining and the stars appear to be fighting amongst themselves confused living entities appear to be blaze and weeping yeah ablaze ablaze huh? confused living entities appear to be ablaze and weeping so some more sun are declining stars appear to be fighting and so on ah, so more okay 18th one rivers tributaries ponds reservoirs and the mind are all for to for to better butter no longer in needs fire hmm. what is this extraordinary time what is going to happen hmm, hmm. so butter no longer ignites fire so if you have this ghee uh, this batti a wick with with ghee and you try to ignite it it doesn't ignite so this is also a bad omen what is the extraordinary time what kind of extraordinary time is this what kind of time we are living some so many bad omens okay so 19th the cows do not suck and teats of the cows now do the cows give milk they are standing crying tears in their eyes and the bulls take no pleasure in the pasturing post grounds huh? so the cows are the, the calves are not sucking the milk from the cows udders the cows are not giving milk huh? like that bulls are not taking any pleasure in pasturing ground so this is another indication okay next one mataji the deities seem to be crying in the temple laminating and perspiring they seem about to leave all the cities villages towns gardens mines and her hermitages are now devoid of beauty and bereft of all happiness i do not know what sort of calam cal calamities are now waiting for us uh, so dt seem to be crying in the temple lamenting and perspiring so i could see some picture here where probably the dt's are being shown where they seem probably crying and so on and then villages cities and they are now devoid of beauty there is no happiness there and like that there are multiple omens that yudhishthir maharaj is seeing so this ends the list of omens 
now uh, we will once again we will quickly finish these four verses because there is nothing more needed here only reading is required yudhishthira's suspicions are supplemented by arjuna's appearance huh? please read from here i think that all these earthly disturbances indicate some greater loss to the good fortune of the world the world was fortunate to have been marked with the footprints of the lotus feet of the lord these signs indicate this will no longer be hmm so if you remember in the kunti devi's prayer and uh, i think in the bhishma bhishma prayers also uh, probably in the bhishma prayer mo most likely we had discussed that uh lord krishna's uh, footprints are all over this place which makes this place very auspicious so now yudhishthir maharaj is saying something similar that now when there will no be there will not be any footprints of the lord then this place will not be as auspicious okay oh, oh brahmana sankha while Shonaka. maharaj itrastra observing the inauspicious signs on the earth at that time was thus thinking of thinking to himself arjuna came back from the city of yadus dwarka yeah. so while yuchij maharaj was thinking all this arjuna came back from dwarka and then these two verses final two verses for today yeah when the when he bowed at his feet the king saw that his dejection was unprecedented his head was down and tears glided from his lotus eyes yeah so when arjuna came back from dwarka yudhishthir maharaj took the face reading of arjuna and he found that he was very very dejected he was very down uh, and then tears were coming out from his lotus eyes so all those symptoms were there from arjuna now yudhishthir maharaj started to confirm uh, that whatever he has been thinking and uh, kind of uh, assuming looks like it that has happened ah, so 24th seeing arjuna pale due to the heart felt anxiety the king remembering the indications of the sage narada questioning him questioned him in the midst of his friends yeah so now he will ask question from arjuna and that we will cover in the in the next class so he asked arjuna some questions in the middle of the assembly uh which will be the subject matter to begin the next class so till then we uh we conclude the class so all glories to shrimad bhagavatam all glories to shila prabhupad and then you can now reflect upon some points from this class and meanwhile i will try to see who are the people for the next class i think for mangala charan prayer it is anuradha mata ji and for summary it is it is vasudevan prabhu is it correct rakesh ji yes prabhu ji okay so we write the name of anuradha mata ji here okay anuradha mata ji okay meanwhile if devotees would like to make any remark or comments they can or most welcome to do it i hope the class was interesting enough uh, uh some very good lessons from the class today i i personally liked uh, reading it i hope you also found it useful any any other more reflections or thoughts most welcome now <clears throat> prabhu ji krishna ke jaate hi itna kadhi hua gaya tha itne bhayavah sthiti hone lagi thi tabhi se <laughs> अब देखिए भागवतम कह रही है तो मान लेते हैं जी <laughs> ये तो आज की स्थिति दिखाई दे रही है जो तब था हाँ इट इज एक्चुअली कलयुगा ओनली दिस इज व्हाट वी सी इन कलयुगा ऑल काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप प्रॉब्लम ऑल काइंड ऑफ ग्रीड एंगर चीटिंग एवरीवेयर सो दिस इज एक्चुअली डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ कलयुगा ओनली यू आर राइट वेरी करेक्ट वेरी गुड ऑब्जर्वेशन प्रभु जी ओके so like looks like no more uh, comments and remarks and sharings so with that uh, we conclude the class today thank you very much for joining us being part of this discussion uh, really appreciate thank you very much hare krishna 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 hare
ओके जी थैंक यू